All right, good evening, everybody. It's six o'clock, so let's uh, call our December 8th, 2022 meeting of the Airport Advisory Board to order. Um, who can we start with the roll? Here. Thank you very much. Um, we've got a busy agenda this evening. We have a lot to discuss. Um, I do want to make one note on the agenda. Under each of the action items, sustainable sustainability resolution recommendation and the lease language recommendation, we will have separate public invited to be heard on each of those topics. You are more than welcome to bring it up at the beginning, but you're also welcome to save comments for each of those sections individually um, so they can be directed to them. Um, with that, Russell, good evening. Good evening. Um, I will open public invited to be heard for our first public invited to be heard. Would anyone like to speak now? I've got Dan Peters and Ken Bicker signed up. Either of you'd like to go now, save it, your call. I'll, I'll wait for seven. Got it. Anyone else want to speak now? Okay. Then we'll move on to our approval of November 2022 minutes. Does anyone have any comments, revisions? Vice Chair Jordan, sorry, my hold on. Go ahead. Just one small one. Um, page four, line three, uh, public invited to be heard, Don Dulce, and he was talking about the beacon light, and it says he stated the green light is unobservable and that the white light is preferred is how it's in the minutes. It should be like clearly observed. You can see the green light. You can't see the white one. <laughs> so, however, we want to clarify that. I think it was probably observed. The green, the white light can be observed. The green is um, is dim. Thank you. Does anyone have any other comments, changes for November 2022 minutes? All right, anyone want to make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll, I'll move to make a motion, please. Mr. Dean made the motion, a second. Okay. Vice Chair Jordan seconded. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, minutes approved. Updates from the airport manager. Levi. Oop, there we go. Right, item one, Southwest Sewer Project. Um, that'll be pretty quick. Things are going really well with that. Um, so far, so good. Uh, there's been just one little minor change order. Uh, they need a little additional gravel for compacting under the pipe because there's a little bit more water than they thought there was. But apart from that, pretty much on schedule. Things are going on track, pretty much on budget. Things are, are pretty good. They're moving qu pretty quick out there. So things are going well. Uh, second, uh, oh, so that's the item one. Keep going. Any questions mm -hmm. or any, on uh, South Comments, questions for anyone? We'll keep going. We're saving it for the <laughs> fun topics. All right. Uh, prey dog mitigation. Um, continue on with meetings on that. Uh, currently, we're having a little bit of issue with some of the mitigation um, avenues that we want to pursue. Um, as far as supplies and getting materials in um, goes with the USDA and stuff like that. We're uh, currently looking at dish, uh, addition, new avenues we could uh, kind of explore to perhaps mitigate that prairie dog problem out there. We're having another meeting about that tomorrow. So hopefully uh, some new plans come up and move forward with that. Um, so that is still very much in uh, the middle of plan making and decision making for a good solid plan on that. Uh, Engineering, um, that's uh, item two. Any questions on that? Anyone? Okay. All right. Uh, third item, engineering. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Go for it. Council Member Martin. Sorry. You popped up. Sorry. And I, here I was trying not to talk too much. But people call me all the time about prairie dogs. 
um, and as, as Phil knows very well. Um, why would the airport not use the same prairie dog mitigation techniques that the city uses on its other land? We currently are using the same uh, techniques for using uh, perk machines, which is kind of the city's approved method of uh, mitigating prairie dogs. The problem is that the volume of prairie dogs at the airport um, in comparison to the staff the city has is kind of overwhelming. Ah, so too they, many prairie dogs. They can't get ahead of it. The problem is they come out, they can only treat so many holes, and then they got to go do their, their other rounds. When they come back, it's, it's worse than it was before. So we got to find a, a method of getting ahead of it, and then potentially they can stay on top of it. They promised that if we can get on top of it, then, then they would, well, then reprioritize and make sure that it doesn't get out of hand again. Thank you. That's a good reason. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? No, go ahead. All right. Uh, engineering consultant update schedule. Um, so we're currently, uh, along with Talos, is helping us out on the selection for those new engineers. We're currently in the middle of reviewing the proposals that we received. We received five proposals. Um, currently digging through those um, and evaluating those. We will have, and I think it is now another meeting Monday to discuss those evaluations. And then shortly after that, we will start setting up interviews for potential engineers at the airport. So that's where that project is currently. Any questions? Okay. Um, thank you. Okay. We've got no information items, so we'll move right into action items. So sustainability resolution recommendation. Uh, Phil, Levi, I don't know who I'm introducing for this, if one of you guys can. No, go ahead. So tonight we have um, folks from our sustainability group to um, talk a little bit about the sustainability resolution that you originally brought forward to staff. Uh, I think that was part of how that kind of came about. We were able to uh, go through that and take it back to staff. So so it, it kind of has an interesting history where it started out um, kind of from the private sector, I believe, and, and from a uh, council member maybe as well, and came in as something to, to kind of look at and see if, if you were interested in it. Lots of changes happened in that time period. We took it back as a new staff, uh, took a look at it, and uh, wanted to run it by our sustainability folks. So tonight we have um, Francie Jaffe uh, on the far end there. Uh, from uh, She is our sustainability coordinator, I believe, is the title I put in there. Um, <laughs> and Hannah Mulroy, our energy portfolio development manager. So they're both here to kind of talk through some of the different things. You, the, the language was really well done, and so we went through it, but we had some additions to it, and then we have some other questions for you as well. So, Francie, if you don't mind uh, kind of walking the, the board through this, and uh, we'll see where we end up. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Uh, as Phil mentioned, my name's Francie Jaffe. I'm a sustainability coordinator. And um, so most of the edits, and I don't know if it would make sense to scroll through it on the screen as I. That's okay. Well, um, why why Phil's bringing that up? Most a lot of the edits were just to add a little bit more information, a little bit uh, more context. And then we had a couple of comments, such questions for the board at the end about uh, the scope of the resolution and whether the, the board would like to expand it beyond the current areas of sustainability it focuses on. So at the top, thanks, Phil. Um, so the, the couple edits at the top are just tying the resolution to some of the other policies and plans that have been passed by the city, as well as highlighting um, the greenhouse gas emissions that were generated um, by the airport in 2019, which was the last time we did a greenhouse gas inventory. Uh, we're currently doing an update, so we should have more information uh, soon on uh, more recent data. And then scrolling down, there's a couple points that it was a little bit more than uh, kind of adding ad additional information. Uh, we added there was a, uh, we added 
we wanted to call out that there would be a need for a capital improvement project to add electric grid infrastructure improvements to meet the different uh, electrification focus areas of the resolution. So we wanted to specifically call that out as an additional line. And then as and then the rest of the edits in the main section were mostly just for clarity, adjusting the language a little bit uh, to better align and I think just make it a little clear from staff's point of view. And then the uh, another addition that is more of a content addition was in section one. We added uh, including aligning codes with Boulder County code cohort recommendations to support solar ready hangers and shade port structures as well as building and ground vehicle electrification. This is currently an effort by Boulder County to do joint countywide code recommendations, though I do want to note these codes have not been uh, discussed by City Council, so there could be a decision that those would need to be discussed first before including that into to this resolution. But we wanted to make sh sure that there was, if aligning with codes was a component, that it, that it could either align with Boulder County codes or that could be adjusted to align with the most ambitious Longmont codes to help meet the electrification goals. So that's a summary. I didn't walk through all the different all the edits of the resolution, the rest of them, again, were more just to help provide clarity. I did want to highlight uh, that currently the resolution has a very uh, carbon-free energy focus and electrification focus, as well as a focus on generating green jobs. The resolution is titled a sustainable aviation resolution, and we wanted to highlight to the board that if the board is interested, staff would be happy to look at other areas of sustainability. It could be waste reduction, it could be water reduction. We have a tool that we could use to focus in on the different areas of sustainability that could be most relevant outside of energy and job growth. Uh, so we want to also can add that option to the board. So essentially to summarize, um, uh, the direction we'd like from the board is that it could either stay with the the focus and either accept the staff edits or add additional edits with that non-carbon energy focus or uh, direct staff if you would all like to expand beyond sustainability into other areas and we can come back or of course you could recommend that you're not interested in progressing this resolution forward. Thank you. Thank you. Comments, questions from board members here? I would, um, if, you, if you have questions, go ahead. Vice Chair Jordan. Um, I have several questions. Um, I note the 300 cars, uh, the annual, um, annual rate of 300 cars. What is that percentage-wise to the number of cars on the road in Longmont? What, what does that represent? Yeah, so we try to, metric tons, I always find is a hard number to visualize. Mm -hmm. So we try to add an equivalency of what 1,300 metric tons carbon dioxide equivalent would look like. So it would be about the equ equivalent of adding additional 300 cars to our road system. Phil, do you have a, off the top of your head how many cars Typically, I, I know VMT. Not, not, not. <laughs> He's got all the. Oh, all right. Um, yeah, I just wondered what the purpose. So just, a, just as an example, um, Main Street, right here, you know, the 300 block of Main Street, carries about 20,000 vehicles, 25,000 vehicles a day. So if that gives you any kind of concept of. Order of magnitude, mm -hmm. um, I hope that helps. Okay, that's good. Um, the, I've definitely appreciated the, um, whereas both private and public investment in the emerging sustainable aviation and batter, battery industry is large and increasing and creates business development opportunities for Longmont. I think that is, um, at least we're speaking only for myself, that's my interest in this is to um, keep it uh, open to, 
it could be um, sustainability like you're talking about all the way to fuel and energy savings and a, particularly the electrification in partnership with LPC is the, the thing that I can see and I'm not an engineer or a planner but I can, I can visualize that. My concern is that um, there is no way we will ever be able to be 100% compliant. Um, we need to um, acknowledge that and decide how we want to approach this. We have aircraft that are, um, we've got vintage aircraft, we've got aircraft that are going to be burning leaded fuel until they're taken offline, and then our jet traffic as well. And so we do, the 100% um, goal isn't realistic for what happens, um, for how long airplanes stay functioning. They last a very long time when you take care of them. So those engines are not, you know, we're not going to be all buying new planes in the next three years. They're, mine's 1981, so they're old. And uh, so we're, we're bound by that reality. So I'm trying to, was trying to see where reality comes into this for the airport as a supporter and as somebody really interested in seeing us leverage that electrification idea. Um, and again, in a partnership with the city because of our unique situation. So I just see that um, it's not going to be, a, I don't believe it's going to successfully be a case of one or the other for the airport, that we either do it or we don't do mm -hmm. it. We have to be inclusive and include um, all the varieties of aircraft that exist, uh, grandfathered, but again, planes last forever. So even grand, you know, the grandfather clauses are going to have to be 75 years. So otherwise, it looks good. I, I did note the, um, all the sidebar comments, and I think the motivation, at least again speaking for myself, is to be a pioneer in this and to support uh, the electric um, pursuit and to be an airport that, to become a destination for electric aircraft, and that would make us unique. And that's always been the goal, but just to understand that 100% uh, compliance is not, it's not going to be feasible. So d what do we do to be um, pioneers, be ready for the future, be positioning ourselves for the future as it rolls out, but still support all the planes that are on the field that can't be retrofitted or changed um, to electric or in some of them even to some of the other fuels. But otherwise, it, it read well, and I did see that we got the um, the cleans the you know the cleaned up version, and um, and I definitely appreciate that we're having the conversation finally, and that we're finally getting this um, and getting you in front of us. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, and we can definitely explore looking at language if the the board is interested that speaks that adjusts and speaks to um, just reflecting back what you heard that. The resolution wants to highlight being pioneering without why being still realistic that not all aircraft can be transitioned to 100% electricity. Thank you. Mr. Dean. As somebody that has a little bit of background, the, the um, amount of CO2 and amount of emissions seem to be off. Um, I was a state licensed emission inspector for about a year, and most newer vehicles produced in the last 10 years or so are... are, are extremely clean, and in fact, I can give you some numbers. Uh, when I tested vehicles, they were 0 0.02 grams per mile. Um, they're, they're really, really clean. So uh, modern automotive fuel is much cleaner than aviation fuel. And so when I see, um, you know, 1,300 car, 1300 cars, I, I think it's probably a lot more than that, uh, to be honest, because the amount of pollution cars make now is, is very, very low compared to aircraft. So. Um, and then secondly, the charging standards. Uh, I like that we're trying to jump ahead, but charging standards, at least in the automotive world, there's about three right now. And I would hate to see the city invest millions of dollars for charging and electrification, and then the aviation industry take a 90 degree turn and we'd be stuck with millions of dollars of, of you know, charging that we can't use because there's a completely different uh, charging infrastructure. Um, right now there's a fight. Uh, there's three different ones, and then there's even a couple of offshoots of the, of the current um, charging standards in Europe that are 800 volt. So, you know, if we spent millions of dollars and then Cessna and um, Beach and other companies decided not to use those charging standards, we'd be kind of stuck. So I don't want to go too far out in front and say, let's be the first because that can actually cause issues, so. Great, thank you for those comments. And then I wanted to 
share that uh, another way of we could present the greenhouse gas data is a percentage of our total emissions. And currently, um, the, the, it's less than 1% from the Vance Brand Airport of our total citywide emissions. So that could be another way instead of doing that equivalency to cars, and then we don't run into that conflict that car efficiency changes over time. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just to, to save, uh, I think, uh, some discussion, uh, a resolution is not an ordinance and it's not prescriptive in terms of what the city does. So there is nothing in the resolution whatsoever, and in fact, nothing contemplated by the city Longmont, of Longmont in terms of any policies that would mandate uh, getting rid of conventional uh, general aviation. This resolution doesn't say that. We're not going to say that. Um, you know, at some point when we're all choking on the fumes, the federal government might ban um, Avgas just the way it banned, you know, leaded gasoline in the 60s for all intents and purposes. Um, so, uh, but, but a resolution can't do that, nor can it do something like specify a particular um, charging standard. Um, you know, so really, I mean, in, in my understanding of where, char uh, where car charging is going, there are three still out there, but there's really only two, and Tesla is providing an adapter for the other one. So it's narrowing down pretty fast anyway, but, uh, a resolution does not call for not call for specifics in that sense. Uh, so relax, guys. <laughs> you know, all you guys with the planes built in 1950, you're fine. This is about making the lower carbon fuels and electricity um, uh, uh, available. It's, you know, it's not about banning anything. Um, the other thing is that the 2030 resolution is about generating electricity. Our policies for getting to zero emissions, uh, well, actually, we don't have any policies for getting to zero emissions, but our, our greenhouse gas emissions goals for the city are farther out and lower than 100%, because nobody knows how to do that. So just, yeah, just, just relax on those, those scores. We're not going to take your planes away. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Salamatine. Hi. Uh, I appreciate all the work that you ha guys have put into this, and sorry if I missed anything from last week. Uh, but I, I'm all about sustainability. I know quite a bit about electrification. I uh, worked briefly on a solid-state graphene battery, so... I have some industry knowledge. Um, from my understanding, there's some hesitancy to um, for electric grids to bring on too many electric vehicles or else there will be some sort of issue with the amount of uh, capacity that's available. Now, I'm not sure if there's been any sustainability studies in terms of the fiscal uh, amount of uh, fiscal responsibility on how much money it would take to, in order to get to where we're going in this resolution. But I, I have a suspicion that we're, we're quite a far distance away from having 100% renewable uh, or 100% battery powered uh, aviation just because of the, the grid limit, limiting factor of the, of the grid, right? So um, let's stay realistic. Let's make sure that we're not, um, you know, just being grandiose. Um, one thing that I am uh, interested in about is the propeller. Uh, sound versus electric versus gas. Uh, I'm not an engineer, but I don't know how that could be different because if they're just spinning at the same speed, that would cause air friction to be the same. So I, I don't really understand how that's even possible. Yeah, this is one of those items that was left in, so it wasn't changed by our staff. It was just left in as a statement that was from the original language, so... Certainly a question. I'm happy to answer um, some of the distribution and generation. Yeah. Uh, 
grid questions, because I actually, to make a point of clarification to Phil, I'm not from the sustainability team. I work for Longmont Power and Communications, Energy Portfolio Development Manager. Um, so just a couple of points. I can't speak to the noise, but when it comes to the distribution grid, and the, you're completely correct, right? So even just us having four level three chargers at one of our facilities is a capacity concern from an infrastructure perspective. And we're looking at transformer upgrades and who bears the burden of those costs and things like that. So we're looking at that from a small scale at a residential, what does when one person electrifies, what do we do about that? But certainly at a large scale like this, it's something we're considering. Um, the city is undergoing several uh, studies to consider things like this. So we are part of the Platte River Power Authority's distributed energy uh, resources. I'm on that steering committee and that's looking at it from a generation transmission level as well as the distribution level we're doing a gap analysis with them right now we're just at the beginning of that but that's kind of hey if we fully electrify in certain areas what would we need to support that at a distribution and generation level we also are doing things at a more local level with hosting capacity for electrification um that's coming in two forms the city just passed a beneficial bit beneficial building electrification plan in October, which was adopted by city council. Um, and in that plan, we kind of know that hosting capacity is a baseline study we're doing with our engineers. We're also doing a smart grid roadmap project that is identifying where on the system do things need to be replaced? How can we preemptively do it? And how can we plan our CIPs? You know, 30 year, out for 30 years at least um, to support electrification. And because staff knows that this is a priority of the airport, a potentially priority should this resolution pass, um, we've already begun discussions on how this area of town essentially, this substation and the infrastructure in place at the airport would need to be modified um, to support that. So essentially once folks are kind of ready to go and have some idea of what they're looking to install at the airport, you would then come to our staff and we would work with you to figure out what kind of the system upgrade part of that would be and what that cost would be. That's very reassuring. I'm glad that you're doing all that work. I'd love to talk offline about some of the stuff that you're working on. Absolutely. Reach out. We'll talk anytime. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll get you in just a second. <laughs> um, a couple, I guess, overarching questions. How's any other organization in the city um, I don't know all the different advisory boards, but are there other uh, resolutions like this in the city, or is this unique to the airport? I would say this is unique to the airport. I do not believe we, as Hannah mentioned, just passed a beneficial electrification plan. So the city will be making steps towards, and that does focus on building electrification. Um, there are also efforts. We have an Equal Carbon Free Transportation Roadmap that looks at vehicle electrification. And we did pass a Go EV resolution focused more on vehicles, but it was citywide. So I would say the specific focus on a building, to my knowledge, is more unique. Anyone else knows of any other? I think that's a valid okay. point. You also are Thank you. in a unique operational sure. situation. Um, but yeah, sometimes there's building specific improvements and then citywide improvements. So the beneficial building electrification plan has a goal of looking at municipal facilities for electrification. So we're certainly looking at facility by facility. Um, but you're kind of your own little enclave in your own op operation. So I would say, yeah, this is the first kind of departmental, if you want to call it that, or divisional yeah. um, sustainability initiative okay. I am aware of. It's helpful to understand since I know at least um, Council Member Waters in the past has compared like from a land use perspective to some of the golf courses, which is also an enterprise fund, if the other enterprise funds are doing something similar or if we're on the leading edge here. I don't want to speak for other departments. I wouldn't say that they're golf, golf specifically or recreation no, that's a sustainability <laughs> initiative, but I would say they're undertaking initiatives on the individual yes. courses or buildings, right? So we're, I work in for LPC. I work with a lot of different departments on energy efficiency okay. and electrification and solar and things of the sort. But no, I wouldn't say any kind of enterprise fund or departmental um, entity has adopted such a resolution. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Bill, this might be more for you and Levi. It might even be more for Council Member Martin. We're being asked to basically recommend that this moves forward, but my understanding is this hasn't been introduced to council either. So is this, is, if we choose to take action on this tonight, is the action then to introduce it to council and make a recommendation? Is that what we're being asked for? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think that's, that's exactly right. We want to get any kind of edits that you want to put into this as a board. Uh, 
I think we recommend uh, kind of moving it forward as is, but if you have any recommendations for language changes or anything like that, we'd like to make sure we incorporate them and then we'll take it up to council as a recommended recommended okay. item from this board to council to consider uh, as a resolution. Thank you. Okay, I've got, did you wanna chime in on that? Um, yes, sort of. Um, the, the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board has at least kicked around the idea of water conservation resolutions. Um, so, you know, some enterprises are, have, have different than, things than, than uh, others. Um, obviously, the airport has more exceptional stuff than a golf course does, but it does use a lot of water. Um, so, uh, and, and then once again, just the, I, I'm sensing from the comments that, um, that people are reading this as a restriction on the airport, and that's exactly upside down. It is a way to get more stuff for the airport. Um, or, or to enable, you know, enable the, uh, get more attention for the airport by getting its grid upgrades sooner, by, um, uh, you know, having more reasons to put in a better FBO or uh, a, a, a clubhouse at the airport, all of those things a distributed energy resource, which is gonna be a focus, get one of those for the airport. Um, so again, it's, it, it doesn't restrain the airport at all, but it, um, it enables the airport, and, and that's the way most resolutions are. Um, so that was, and, and that actually is, by the way, why I questioned the zero waste thing um, because that's the only por portion of it that has the potential of restricting the airport because we might have to put um, places that don't exist right now for um, uh, waste containers or for um, uh, roads for the garbage trucks that are big enough for the garbage trucks. So I was real, I was a little bit leery about that one. Um, but again, it's just, it's still just a recommendation even in that, in that particular case. Thank you. Um, I've got uh, Mr. Robeson, Vice Chair Jordan, and then I'm gonna open it up for public comment and we can come back to anyone else who wants to comment after that. Uh, but Mr. Robeson. I'm sorry, hold on. I did Melinda by accident. Go ahead. You haven't had a chance yet, so go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, this, personally, this isn't the thing that I care most about at the airport, but I think if you skip right down to the actual resolution, sections one and two, they're good goals. I mean, they're good things, like Marcia said, um, to bring some attention and money toward the airport, maybe make it a destination that's a little bit different from some of the others. So I think sections one and two are great. I think um, if, we, if you're looking for recommendations from us, I would cut out some of these whereases that are either inaccurate or you know maybe don't have the effect that we're looking for. Specifically, I would say just take out the whole comparison to how many cars per year because that's not doing us any favors. Like um, Melinda said, you know it's a less than one percent, like you said. Um, that's it's not a lot, so that's not a good reason in my mind. Um, I would take out. Whereas carbon-free fuels for sustainable aviation are currently available, I don't think that's really true on a large scale. I mean, they're, they're getting there. The UL85, I think, is almost there for some piston aircraft. So I would just take that out, uh, take out the, no the propeller noise from electric planes being lower. Um, the key here is, yeah, we want some more investments in new things. Focus on that. Focus on getting the fuel that they're almost ready to certify that is ultra low lead. Everyone agrees we don't wanna be dumping lead on the ground that we don't have to. So I think that's an easy, you know, easy uh, low hanging fruit, I guess. Um, take out the whereas, there's a shortage of pilots. That's a nuanced thing. Doesn't really have much to do with flight training as far as in battery powered aircraft. I don't think you're gonna be able to make the case that that dramatically lowers the cost of flight school. 
So if you just narrow that down, I think um, you could focus on some of those things that really support sections one and two. That would be my vote. Thank you, Mr. Robeson. Vice Chair Jordan. Um, following right on what he said, I'd say strike the engine noise and propeller noise. Um, and then I would echo what Russ just said that they, I'd like to keep it um, a broad scope. I think it would, it will go farther in a broad scope, especially if it's more of a mission statement than a, um, a call to order and a task list. My question is, um, and then to Marsha um, about the trash, um, the airport, other than at the air show, we don't produce a ton of trash because we don't, we don't live there. We, we produce things that uh, we take to recycling, so oil containers, um, the oil, there's a place to dispose of that. Um, some paper towels, some, you know, we use rags to clean them. I mean, we really do our best to not, um, maybe some water bottles and things like that. So mostly recyclable. I know in my hangar, we just have a big trash can and I think it gets emptied maybe twice a year. And so we aren't producing a ton of, of garbage um, to worry about zero waste, I don't think. And we do do that for the air shows. Um, and we do work with the city uh, to provide all those um, containers at the air shows. And then the, but my question is actually, are we safe to assume a partnership with LPC? And I realize you can't speak for the entire organization, but that's really what this hinges on is uh, a partnership with LPC and that we become a partner. View, we've, the airport's taken its hits and we feel like the stepchildren. And so as a partner with LPC, as a, um, a site, a location, a, a pioneer of, you know, a beta test site, we have um, a lot to offer and I think we have a lot to, to deliver, that we can deliver to the aviation community. But of course it's dependent on a partnership and that we're um, treated as partners and uh, that LPC leverages what we have, which is some space and some demand, and that just seems to be the critical component. So uh, my question is just, we make this, but we really depend on that partnership to make it happen. So is, can you tell us if LPC is committed to a partnership um, with city entities, with, with entities within the city and then specifically the airport? So I hesitate to speak on partnerships because there's also usually financial um, implications in that. So setting that aside, where I can, I'm not in a position to speak to that, um, I will say we are fully available for support, coordination, technical technical support, site planning endeavors. Um, I, like I said, identifying, hey, if you come to us and say, hey, we're going to put three chargers in. We can give you all the information you need on what that upgrade would look like, give you some basic engineering, things of the sort. Um, and I would say, like any government, city of Longmont entity, we treat as a partner. So I've recently, I don't want to throw out a name, but a specific campus came to me interested in solar and EV chargers and efficiency upgrades. And we are working with them very closely on uh, realizing their efforts. Um, so I can't, again, speak to a full right. partnership and what that might look like, but absolutely. Yes. So understanding that the airport has a limited budget, and I have no idea how much this stuff would cost. So will LPC see us as a test bed even? Um, that I guess I would ask, would LPC please consider us as a test bed to put that equipment in and, uh, you know, provide a partner with us at that level, which again is financial, of course, like you say. Um, but the, we don't have the, the funding to buy our own equipment and it would be a, we wouldn't be seeking the revenue from it. We'd be seeking to defer that or take a portion of it, but defer it to, um, LPC, you know, so it's really it, truly a partnership. We're kind of would be the host site and then, um, your playground is how I could see it working and, you know, envision it actually happening. So that's really, I think that's one of the things that uh, it's a cornerstone to this being able to even be visualized would be that, uh, that we could be a test site. I will say we are often looking for demonstration projects, so I'll, I'll leave that at, in terms of the test site thing. But I will also say um, we have recently helped several city entities and partner agencies um, 
seek funding. Um, so, you know, not necessarily being the grant writer, but there's just a lot of money out there right now with the um, Inflation Reduction Act. Obviously, we are now as city entities eligible for direct pay where we used to not be able to get the tax benefits. Now we can get a 30% direct pay for solar installations and battery installations and things of the sort. So again, while I cannot con say anything about financial contribu contributions, we have um, alerted other entities and, and city facilities of existing opportunities, grants, um, partnership opportunities, fun financing opportunities, things of the sort. And we've already kind of started to do that when it comes to electrification, solar, and battery. So um, we're full of resources. Uh, and I, if, if it's okay, I would like to provide a little bit of clarity on the zero waste uh, uh, I agree with you. I don't. It sounds like, based on the comments you made on the waste generated, that it's not as great as an opportunity. There's currently a universal recycling ordinance that is looking to require all buildings in Longmont to recycle, but there will be exemptions. So, in, uh, there'll be exemptions based on the amount of, or we'll we'll be discussing exemptions with council next week. So, I can't guarantee what there will and will not be. But currently, there is discussion for exemptions based on the amount of trash generated, or if there are shared bins. So, I just wanted to provide that bit of clarity on uh, okay. what's coming on the the waste requirements in Longmont and. Uh, but we'll be discussing more with city council next week. So I'd recommend you be realistic and realize if you put a trash truck at the airport once a month, you probably won't have anything to pick up because we take it home. We take it home and put it in our own bins. And so um, we don't leave stuff out there. There's animals and all kinds of things we don't want to encourage in the mice, especially we don't want them in our hangars. And so we take it home. So we really, I think if you put a truck out there, it would be, it'd be rare. It'd be just Levi's office producing paper or something. <laughs> um, yes, and that, that's where the, we could work with you all if, uh, the ordin if or when the ordinance goes into effect to, up to fill out an exemption so that uh, recognizing that you don't generate a lot of waste. Thank you. Councilman Martin, I see you in the queue. I'm going to turn you on, but and then I'd like to um, open up public comment. Absolutely. Um, a couple things. The first one is, is that uh, uh, the zero waste ordinance would be, uh, n actually I don't think there should be anything in this resolution about it personally, but, um, but uh, we're not really talking about hangar occupants as for um, general aviation. Really we're talking about potential future airport based businesses. Um, you know, Mile High, for example, might have a different recycling program because there's, I don't know if there's Coke machines or something out there, right? You know, so um, uh, that it, it would be a small number of, of affected uh, businesses, really. But again, in terms of the um, partnership and budgeting, um, all of the things that this references would end up in capital plans. And so it's not like there's this resolution creates an obligation for the airport to find things in its existing budget, um, you know, and, and put batteries in the non-existent uh, uh, airport terminal, right? No, we, it's, it's more that, oh, when they start designing the airport terminal because there's money for it, one of the things that gets considered is utility scale batteries. Um, you know, so again, it's, it's not obliging the airport to do stuff. It is obliging the city to do stuff for the airport. And that means that, um, you know, by LPC's contract with the city, or as a city, as an enterprise within the city, it, it takes that on and it gets negotiated uh, just as with all other city improvements. So basically, don't be scared. <laughs> Would anyone like to uh, make comments from the public on this resolution? Or more accurately, who would like to come first? You know the rules traditional of public invited to be heard, so um, maybe Levi will turn on the microphone for you. And then please start with your name and address. I'll start a timer for five minutes. Uh, Ron Krenzel, 12191 North 61st Street. Uh, 
really, I, I was hysterical when I read this resolution. Uh, I couldn't believe I, all the problems we have at the airport, and we're talking about this. Let me give you a little facts, though, because I was so entertained. 1,361 tons for 300 cars. If you go just a little bit into pollution, it comes out really, really easy. One metric ton with a 22 mile a gallon car is about 2,500 miles. So 4.53 metric tons is about what a car burns in a year. That's sort of the classic statement of what a car does. Uh, and if you, and I, I went, well, what does an airplane do? So I thought about that for a little minute, and I said, well, there's kind of small planes at the airport. Let's say the average guy flies, flies, plane flies 50 hours a year, and it gets 10 gallons an hour. That's probably sort of typical for an RV or a 172 or something that kind of flies at the Longmont Airport. Um, <clears throat> that means if they did that, they'd burn 500 gallons a year. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so that comes out to about, if you sort of translate that, comes out to this 1,361 tons for 300 cars. If you kind of do that, it's almost 300 planes, 4.53 metric tons. That's where they got that number. It, it's just a simple number. They said, well, there's 300 airplanes and 300 cars burn that much gas. So. If, those many airplanes must burn that much gas. That's, that's silly. Of the 300 airplanes at the airport, probably 60% of them don't fly more than 10 hours a year. And probably 10% of them do 80% of the flying. And, and so it, it, that's, a, that's a silly measure. Um, You know, this is a good idea maybe in 20 years. There are no electric flying airplanes in the, in the world right now other than prototypes. It's not going to be a major impact on aviation for any time to see. Uh, jet fuel does not, I would change this, jet fuel does not contain lead. That's a, a misnomer. Um, The, the idea of carbon-free free, free fuels is a misnomer. It, every airplane in the world require, at this time, for the most part, requires lead uh, carbon-based fuel, and that's not going to change. Um, my brother is an engineer for Sierra Nevada, which is a company in Denver and around the country, and he's in. It, it's an aviation country, and he he and I have debated this electric airplane business. Sierra Nevada is pretty progressive, and they don't think it's going to go anywhere. Um, so to write a resolution that sort of states some big deal about what the Longmont Airport is doing about aviation is just electrical aviation seems sort of silly. Going back just a step, there, there are 85,599 cars in Longmont. There are 262,721 cars in Boulder County. Oh, that's the 2021 statistic. That turns out to be in the city about, of, of there's about 300 airplanes at the Longmont Airport, I think. That turns out to be about 0 .00. 3% of the transportation vehicles in the city are airplanes, and in the county, it's 0.001%. Uh, <clears throat> aviation in general, uh, you get different numbers, but it's about 1.9 to 2.1% of all greenhouse gra gas emissions is from aviation. General aviation, airplanes is less than one tenth piston powered airplanes are less than one tenth of one percent of greenhouse gases <clears throat> of all transportation excuse me 
12% of all transportation comes from aviation. 74% of Thank greenhouse you. gases come from roads. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Howard Morgan, 1932 Amethyst Drive, Longmont. I've been in this aviation business for 60 plus years and I've seen good things and bad things and I have to say putting solar panels on the airport is one of the dumbest things I've heard in a long time. Number one, they reflect light, which is absolutely something you don't want on an airport. Number two, they're taking up space that uh, should be reserved for aviation, such as hangars. Number three, it's a direct hazard for any skydiver that land on these things. And there's four, five, and six reasons that I don't have time for. In the meantime, we have a FBO that is an absolute dump compared to any airport uh, connected with a city of 100,000 people. And the money that <clears throat> would be spent on this fiasco would be much better spent on an FBO building and some other improvements on the airport that would make it a place that people are looking forward to come to, which uh, business aviators right now are coming here because they need to, not because they want to. So uh, uh, I think uh, uh, you ought to change your priorities on this thing. And uh, while I'm here, I'd like to commend uh, Levi for cleaning up a lot of the things that have been ignored for the last seven or eight years. He's doing a good job. There's more to be done, but uh, he's working on it, and I appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you. Dave Kopp, 4625 West 99th Place. Uh, Westminster, and uh, I agree. Uh, props that run uh, on electricity don't make any less noise than ones that run on uh, IC engines. And I've actually, one of the few people that's flown an all-electric airplane, and uh, it took us five hours to charge it for a 20-minute ride. Uh, it was a sailplane, and the uh, motorized sailplane, but we didn't find any lift, so we had to be at the airport in 20 minutes. So, uh, and that was... I, the, you needed to wear headsets, and it, even uh, the noise from that prop was quite noisy. So, um, and again, I think uh, I think it's a great idea, but uh, focus on the golf courses. They've been running electric vehicles for 20 years. They're experts at it, and the good news is, if you have a problem, uh, you can pull off the side and park it. If you have a problem in an, an electric airplane, you're still looking for one mile of concrete to set this thing down on, and or dirt road, anything. And so it's a whole lot more risky there. And I am one that flies in experimental aircraft and helicopters, so I know about risk. I'm always looking for a place to land. And the helicopter is just a little spot, not much bigger than a helicopter, but in an airplane, I'm looking for a mile of something straight and level. Um, so golf courses would be my, <laughs> my focus on that one. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else want to make another comment at this time. Okay. I'll close the public comment then for this item. Board members, other comments, questions? Would anyone like to introduce a motion if there are no comments, questions? Vice Chair Jordan. I move that we do, uh, that we strike some of the whereas clauses as recommended. Um, number cars, prop noise, um, shortage of pilots. Some things that really box in and, and put a time stamp on this. Um, we had a shortage of pilots and we had a pandemic and everybody I know got laid off. So uh, a lot of pilots were delivering Amazon. So that's they're all volatile and subject to change. So if we do pare that down to just a forward-looking statement, and um, as Russ said, section one and two really encompasses what we're interested in. And to Marcia's point, um, and to answer Howard, is I see that it's a visionary statement and that it would be providing some framework for us 
to get the new FBO and have this in place and have the new FBO be built with an eye toward the future. And um, it's going to be there. There are people making these airplanes, and we are trying to work on different fuel. So our new FBO also has to include a fuel farm, a different, you know, some different fuel setup. So I propose that we, we strike some of the uh, limiting language and um, accept this as a um, just sort of a mission statement um, as it's intended. So you started saying that as a motion. No, sorry, um, yeah, I did. Or was that in? Would you either like to restate a motion, or there was a that. kind of proposal for us to consider at the end there as well? I guess uh, I'll st yeah, because then we can argue about it, right? Okay, so well, I, we can argue about everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I propose that the um, line about cars, the whereas about noise, the whereas about uh, the shortage of pilots be stricken from the statement. Uh, and the uh, existing fuels statement because um, we don't have evidence that that's available. Those be stricken, we reduce it and accept it um, as a part of our vision plan. And that's your motion? Yes. That's my motion. Okay, is there a second to the motion on the floor? I second it. Moved and seconded. Um, Mr. Robeson, would you like to make a comment about the motion on the floor? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Belinda, I don't see any big rush to do this. I mean, I know they're planning to present it to council in a week or two, but I would say maybe one or two of us should rewrite as we see fit, bring it to the next meeting and compare notes and maybe do it that way. That would be my idea anyway. Uh, Mr. Dean, did you have a comment? Or is that for your second? Nope. Okay. Sorry. Mr. Salamatine. I... I want to thank uh, Marsha for the comments about uh, framing this properly, making sure that we're looking at this as an opportunity to add more resources to the airport. I just want to make sure that that is encapsulated within this document as well. I don't want this to somehow in the future be used as a way to add additional liabilities to the airport, forcing the owners and operators who use the airport to front the bill for uh, future electrification or future development on the airport. So if there's any way we could um, encapsulate the commitment that the funds will come th from the city or outside of the airport, I think that would be important. But I, um, yeah, that, that's about it. Councilmember Martin. Um, thanks. I just want to say that, that is, that's really essentially already there. A resolution cannot force an enterprise to spend money, um, in in this sense. And it, it, you know, any future budget would have to be approved. Um, the resolution, I suppose. Well, I mean, everything like the hundred percent renewable resolution, uh, which is the most sweeping resolution that the council has ever passed, as far as I can tell. Um, uh, everything that came after that, like solar panels uh, and methane capture and so on uh, at various city facilities, still had to go into a city budget and be approved by the council. And so it would be with this, it is, um, you know, it's, it's a reason to say we need a new FBO and we need a, a terminal where uh, batteries could be stored because that's a policy, but but it's a separate question with uh, uh, than where where whether this airport has the goal of becoming more sustainable, which is really all this whole thing says. Um, I might also suggest um, you know you don't have to, but um, the um, if the council were doing this, we would have to strike the whereas clauses one by one, probably. Noted and appreciate the, my Roberts rules is out of, um, this is out of my realm here. It's probably not worth your time. <laughs> Vice Chair Jordan. So I would like to remove my, uh, withdraw my motion and um, uh, change it to that I move that the um, one or two board members work to rewrite the language clarify further 
to represent uh, this to the board. Is there a second for that motion? Moved and seconded. Any discussion on that motion? Um, Council Member Martin, is the timing, if this comes back to us in January and it gets sent to Council later in January, is that is, is the timing a, an issue at all? Sorry, hold on. That it is, um, you know, so a, 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 a resolution like this can be adopted at any time. Um, the the any urgency with it would be that if the resolution is in place, uh, certain types of grants from the FAA will be looked at more favorably. Um, I am told, um, and uh, you know, if you wait too long, uh, then you know, you're going to get uh, largesse and, and, and cargo is going to be missed by next year's budgeting process. So, but whether it's done in January or February probably doesn't make a big difference yep. at all. So I, w I would not worry about that. Um, uh, I would like to say that um, uh, Cessna recently acquired Pipistrel, which has an all-electric plane specifically for training aviators, and uh, it is FAA certified for use. Mm -hmm. So I just always like to call out members of the public when they say something that's not correct. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, from my perspective, one really appreciate the tweaks the feedback and for talking through this with us. It's been illuminating. Um, I am generally supportive of the language as we've talked about striking, but I would really rather not make motions for every one of those and to clean it up, not in this forum and come back next month. Um, so I would certainly support that motion and would encourage one or two board members to take that on. Well, one or two for open meetings. Any other comment? Otherwise, I'll call for a vote on the motion. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Are there any volunteers for those one or two board members who would like to take this on? Mr. Robeson. Anyone else? Mr. Robeson, you're up. Thank you. All right. We'll move on then to our lease language recommendation. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Levi, your name's on the top of the page, so I'm gonna turn it to you and then you can turn it to other folks from there. All right. I could let Phil readjust here. <laughs> and whoever's driving the screen, can you guys move it to the lease pouch place? Sorry, Phil, I know you're moving. I might just quickly introduce this and talk about this is completely different than what we just talked about, right? So we just did a resolution, very aspirational in nature. And so no law, no ordinance associated with that. This next piece, uh, we wanted to chat with you about um, the lease language that's been a hot topic as of late, of course. And so uh, I wanted to introduce our city attorney, Eugene May, who uh, was just sitting by Levi there, so and we put his nameplate up so you'd see who it was. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll let Levi kind of take the rest of this. Okay. Uh, as, we, of course, we've been talking about for a while now, we've kind of been working on the, the lease language uh, as we kind of move towards creating a, a new base airport lease. There were some concerns about uh, from the FAA about kind of how those were written, so we've been addressing those. Um, during... Um, so the city has proceeded forward with language that they're going to recommend. Um, during the conversations that we had with the airport advisory board this last week, a uh, previous uh, meeting was suggested that the board get together and then they, uh, they make uh, additions and then they, they then advise the city staff. During that meeting, uh, uh, Mr. Earl had an excellent uh, point. He said that why don't we create a, a quick little graph that kind of shows what we're proposing compared to what um, other cities are doing around the area. And Phil, if you could pull that up real quick. 
So this is an excellent point for a start. Just kind of review what the, uh, in general, what the city is kind of recommending. So at the top there would be Longmont. So proposing a 30 year uh, base term lease um, without an option to renew. And then we're going to recommend moving forward with uh, putting first right refusal um, into those leases. So in, in kind of comparison to other airports around the area, and I'll just go over them real quickly here. Greeley does a 20 year lease. Um, then they offer two five year options after that 20 year lease. And all of their leases do have a right of first refusal. Uh, Broomfield offers a 30 year lease with a single 10 year option after that. Then all of their leases are reversionary. Uh, Fort Collins has a 25 year lease uh, with three five year options after it. And then all of their leases are also reversionary. Uh, Leadville, Colorado is actually currently in the middle of uh, revising their leases also. Um, they have decided upon doing 25 year leases. They've decided upon doing reversionary uh, and they haven't made any decisions yet on options to renew. So I kind of wanted to put this up here just as a point of reference for kind of what we're looking to do and kind of what other people are doing. Um, to my understanding, the base term and the option to renew are kind of the hot topic items of, of the language that we put into the new lease. There was, it's worth mentioning, uh, there is additional language that the city is recommending to change regarding, let's see if I can find it specifically here, regarding uh, section 4.5, which uh, deals with when someone has to notify the airport that they have an aircraft in their hangar. Um, but that's the, the only other part of the lease that we're making recommendations for changes on. So we have proceeded forward with those recommendations. Uh, also in that packet, you will see the results of what the uh, airport has recommended. Um, red lines for the airport advisory board panel members on lease language. So that is what the airport board is recommending. Well, to be clear, the red line is what I've put in there. Yes. Um, so, and would tweak a little bit based on what we realize now. Um, I will open the floor, board members. Comments, questions, appreciate the city attorney being here. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dean, you're up first. Um, um, I did email Levi back after looking at it and um, the language, um, possibly change it to first, uh, first right or first option to purchase because right to refusal um, sounded kind of odd when I looked over it. Basically, what the city was the city was asking was when you change the, the language, what it, what you're asking essentially is the city has the first right to purchase your hangar at fair market value, and so the right to refusal I got was kind of an odd, uh, an odd way to phrase that when it's you're wanting the first right to purchase it. Uh, so that's okay. kind of what I was I was kind of wondering about. All right, and I would default that language to the city's attorney's office. I suppose whatever proper contract language would be is is what we would recommend moving forward with, I suppose. Do you have any input on that? Uh, Chair and members of the Airport Advisory Board, Eugene May, City Attorney. Uh, first right of refusal is just a sort of term of art in contract languages, language. Uh, you know, uh, first right of purchase would probably be more accurate, but it's, I think, essentially the same in terms of the substantive right which would be the city would have the first opportunity to acquire that interest. Thank you. Um, Mr. Robeson, sorry, I kicked you out there, so let me actually get you first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Levi, mm -hmm. the reversions at the airports that do them, has, have any of those ever actually occurred, or are they just always manage to negotiate a new lease in time? Uh, to my understanding, and I spoke mostly regarding that with uh, uh, BJC, uh, yeah, they exercise their reversionary right. They have yeah. often? Yeah. What, I mean, so the airport That's, now owns the hangar and they rent it out, or what do they, they do? They do actually quite a few of them. In fact, that was part of my position when I was there was renting out hangars that the airport owned. All right. Vice Chair Jordan. Um, I just wanted to note that the 30-year as we've discussed, um, 
was voted on and, and uh, the population chose it. And the objective is to be a viable business. And so I think we all look at it from a, um, a private standpoint as being hangar owners, but keeping in mind that the 30 years was put in to attract business and attract uh, long-term commitment and make us um, a viable entity sustaining ourselves. So any language, and I don't have a law degree, um, that supports that vision is, I think, what we're ultimately after. That's all we're asking for is, is the ability to be attractive for all these businesses and enterprises that we talk about. And that was kind of, to my understanding, this all kind of started before I got here. The, the big crux was getting that 30 number on there to be better able to go to banks, get 30-year loans. It's a little easier that way. I actually had that conversation with uh, the manager at uh, Greeley Airport, and I kind of asked him, well, how do you get around that? And he says, well, we have we provide special letters to the you know, the, the banks to allow people to let them know, well, yes, it is a 20-year lease with two five-year options to renew, and all the banks, you know, pretty much accept that. Um, it's not our position to necessarily do that. We th it's cleaner to just go with a 30-year, I think, so. Mr. Robeson. Thank you. Um, did you, you took out the uh, option for renewal without putting anything. Was there a reason that you didn't put the 20? Yeah, um, kind of the, our intent is to start our base lease. And again, keep in mind, this is the base boilerplate lease for the airport. There's all kinds of room to negotiate. Um, the FAA recommends, you know, starting base lease at 30 years. Um, pretty much everyone else in the region starts at 30 years or less. That or has reversionary clause. So it puts us, if not competitive, I mean, in my mindset, probably a little more attractive than pretty much any air, airport in the region. So it's a great starting point. But you could be the best by far. As, see, now we get down to <laughs> what benefits the airport and the city as a whole as compared to what benefits an individual leaseholder. So there's that delicate balance to make. Um, I, got a, I have a question for Mr. May. It seems the city's pretty intent on first uh, right of refusal for me, if you're going to do that, 30 days is way too long. What is the minimum number of days that you think you could reduce that down to? Uh, Eugene May, uh, city attorney. So that's really a business question. Uh, this is a large organization, seven days to turn around. Uh, you know, we move at the speed of bureaucracy. Uh, so, uh, you know, from a legal perspective, it could be one day. It could be 100 days. You guys pick the right number. We get to choose? Uh, I'll be <laughs> what, looking at city uh, council right. in, in maybe a couple of weeks. We get to make but a recommendation. <laughs> you get to make a recommendation. And, you know, my client is the airport. And, you know, I, I think just looking at my desk and my workflow, seven days is not enough. So I guess um, on the term... We're all really good on base term 30 years. There's no discussion of that. I would encourage members of the public who are going to come up and speak to focus on kind of the pros and cons of an option and kind of what that adds or detracts from having it or not having it, because um, I think that is certainly on the table for discussion. Um, and section 2.2, which is our right of first refusal. And this might be a city attorney question. This might be a Levi question. I, I, I don't love this language. I'll just say that. But my understanding is the city through eminent domain or other methods can kind of do this today. And so this is intended to be cleaner, more straightforward, and all the rest of it. And I see a little hesitation on my eminent domain statement. So I'd love to understand that. But I, 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 I guess where my question is coming from is, Yes, we have a lot of concerns about specific clauses, specific policy in here. In general, is, is this something that can happen anyway today, and whether it's in the lease or not? Um, or should we kind of, I, I guess, do we need to think about this as completely brand new or focus on individual aspects of it? I'll try the question about could we do it today. Uh, 
the city does have eminent domain authority for a valid public purpose, and you got to jump through a lot of statutory procedural hoops in terms of assessments and valuation and, and things like that. Um, it is a new concept in our leases. And, you know, talking to Levi, I understand that there is a good business justification from the city's perspective and being able to manage the airport for future development. Um, when, when I look at it, uh, leasing property for 30 years is an incredibly long time of city land. And uh, to have additional options on top of that, I mean, I don't know, at least for me, 50 years is a, is a mind boggling time period to give up city ownership and rights of a piece of property that we own. And I can comment on that a little bit too from the practical aspect of uh, going through uh, eminent domain. So I've had that discussion that's come up in my past before and of course recently having a discussion with other airport managers in the region. Um, the story I've come up is like, well, have you ever had to do eminent domain? Yes, it's come up. Um, usually the stories associated behind that is just how the process and went through and just how difficult it was for the airport in general, how much time, money, resources it took. Um, and, you know, keep in mind, at the end of the day, we're still dealing with, you know, this is city land that we're leasing. So the city should have some control over it when it's particularly when it's dealing with the, the future development and the well-being of the airport. Vice Chair Jordan. I guess that's my question is, do you feel um, both of you representing the city, and this is your asset, um, are you comfortable with this language? Do you feel you're getting, we're going to get what we want out of the airport, which is to be an economic generator, um, that it's not going to, you know, turn into a hay field, and that um, the city's protected, mm -hmm. but that it's an attractive offer to a brand new business that wants to come in and turn up dirt and put something down for 30 years, a Sierra yeah. Nevada, a Oscar Blues, or whatever it is, do you feel confident that you can sell this? Oh, absolutely. Um, the first right of refusal is, it's something that I can actually hold out to people as a benefit. So to give you some perspective, um, I have a student who I'm just friends with, you know, he lives back on the East Coast, and he was uh, telling me a story a couple weeks ago, he's trying to develop some hangars back on the East Coast. He's a developer, and how upset he was, and how he's not going to get his money back on it. And I said, "Hey, you should just come out to Longmont. You know, uh, we just have first right refusal. We don't have a reversionary clause." And it kind of blew his mind. He's like, "What are you talking about? No airports do that anymore." So that's an attraction to developers, is to say that, "Hey, after the end of your lease, the city just has first right refusal, or they have the right to buy your your hangars." That's huge because, as you can kind of see in that chart that I put up there too, that's kind of not the norm. I mean, Greeley does it, but that's about the only one on the front range that does that. Councilmember Martin. Um, just a, a quick couple of clarifications, uh, questions for uh, Mr. May. I believe that when the city leases land to developers who are going to build brick and mortar structures, um, those leases are reversionary. Is that not the case? Uh, you see me thinking, uh, I'm not sure of a city property that's leased to developers. Okay. Uh, well, I, I don't think we've encountered that situation. So I'm not sure what the lease provision would be. It depends upon the circumstance, what the activity is on the property, where it is. Um, yeah, I mean, and I think uh, to answer the vice chair's question, you know, I think the language is legally sufficient to achieve the purpose that my client is telling me. I don't know. You know, it's not my role to say whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's my role to implement the direction from the client. Um, and so if, you know, my direction is right of first review, refusal is in the best interest of the city and is the industry norm, you know, we look at other language from these other leases and, you know, we, we will plagiarize, which is the highest form of compliment. Um, and we've had other rights of first refusal and other city contracts. And so that's how that language came together. 
And then Council Member Martin, did you have more questions? Vice Chair Jordan. So let's let's walk this out. We have a, um, a big aviation company that wants to come in and bid out our FBO mm -hmm. and tear it down, build something beautiful, mm -hmm. put in our work with LPC. We have our plan, and we've got a, a, somebody with a bunch of money coming in to do that. Mm -hmm. Are they going to want, is this agreement mm -hmm. going to work for them? Absolutely. And are, is this going to be, what happens at 30 years then yeah. after they've done all well, that? Well, I can spell that out for you. So they say uh, a big FBO is coming in. And remember, this is just the base lease. So if someone comes in and says, hey, I'm going to build the biggest, beautiful, most wonderful FBO you've ever seen with electric charging, and you know there's going to be chandeliers in it, um, we don't have to stop at this. We can say, all right, wow, look at the investment that you're going to put into our community. We're going to give you 30 year lease plus this. Um, the FAA allows us to go up to 50 years. Um, at that point, if we saw a first right of refusal, then at the end of that 50 years, um, let's say that we want it, um, then when we buy it, we still have to pay them the value of that building. That's huge. So via their business plan, they've already more than made their money back on their investment. And on the end of that, they get to get more money when we purchase it from them. So that's very, very desirable. So Shelter just built a new multi-million dollar uh, FBO at KBJC. In 50 years, that belongs to the airport. It doesn't belong to them anymore. So they did that even with reversionary clause. So someone coming in here and doing it, at the end of that, being paid for their building, that's really big. Let's, uh, let's open up public invited to be heard. I've got the two on the list that I'll start with, but anyone is more than welcome to. Um, five minute max per our bylaws. Yes. Yep. So uh, Mr. Peters, you were first on the list, if you'd like to come down. Um, as before, please start with name and address. I'll have a five minute timer going. And thank you. Thank you. Hi, Dan. Dan Peters, 1438 Morningside Drive. I'm a hangar owner and I've been flying out of the uh, Longmont Airport since 1990. I'm here to uh, ask you to vote no on sections 2.2 and 2.3. And I just want to, before I forget, to respond to something that the airport manager said. He said that um, if a new business came and built on a piece of dirt at the end of the 30 years, let's say it was a gangbuster business, and the, um, and the company said, or the city says, hey, I want that now, they, they get the, he said, the value of the building. The business gets the value of the building. Well, the value of the company is not the value of the buildings. Apple is not worth the value of the buildings. If it's a gangbuster building it's, or a company, it's worth far more than the building itself. So uh, back, to my, back to my notes here. Um, for decades, the city has always said that it's not in the hangar rental business, and all of a sudden it's changed. Why? What, what has changed? What are their exact motivations? So far, from what I've heard tonight, it's just a bunch of vague, vague statements. There are no specifics on what, their, what the city's motivations are for changing this language. Um, and as uh, account, or board member Robinson said, the... Uh, the timeline is outrageous. They've got 30 days to decide if they want it, and then they've got 60 days to enter an agreement. So, so that's at least 90 days, and that the sale does not have to be completed within 90 days. It could be longer than that. You know, houses take 30 days to close. It shouldn't take this long to for the city to cut a check to a hangar owner. I bought my hangar when it was under duress. It was in a divorce. They didn't have 90 days. It would de delay the divorce by 90 days. So if a family member came down with cancer and they needed to sell the hangar, they could be delayed months uh, waiting for the city. Um, I'm also concerned about uh, Section 2.3, and that did not have uh, rev bars. So I don't know if that's in the current lease or not. Uh, but the combination of 2.2 and 2.3, I think it could be uh, very dangerous. Um, if you look, the uh, 2.3 says that the city only has to get uh, two appraisals. Well, how are you going to uh, appraise hangers? No professional appraiser can come up with an accurate appraisal of a hanger because the sale prices that are reported to the county are not accurate. And there are so few uh, sales that you can't get a valid statistical sample of it. So, so the city can effectually come up with two lowball appraisals and force you to sell your hanger for those, uh, for those lowball appraisals. So um, I think that that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 
Mr. Bickers was next on the list. Thank you. My name is Ken Bickers. I live at 1153 Princeton Drive here in Longmont. I have a hangar on the south side of the airport, which is significant to this. I want to talk first about uh, uh, point 4.5, which is the, um, um, let me get to it. Yeah, if you'll show that. Uh, within 30 days, the initial occupancy of the premises by the lessee. The lessee shall notify the airport manager of the type and federal registration number. On the south side of the airport, there are 50 six hangars, 51 of those are in two condo associations. Each condo association holds a lease with the city. There are 37 condo units in one, there are 14 in the other. The lessee doesn't have airplanes. That, so there's a middle model in this that runs through the whole contract or the lease agreement that suggests a middle model of one, one uh, hangar owner one lease, one owner of an airplane. And that's a, that it works for some parts of the airport. It's not at all true for other parts. So I have no idea how 4.5 would work on the whole south side of the airport because the lessee would have no idea because that's the condo association and we pay a, an annual assessment to them to cover the portion of the lease that we're responsible for for our particular unit. Um, I want to talk about the other parts of it uh, before I finish. Um, so the, the, it's a bit jarring to have the language about renewal completely removed as if there are not going to be any renewals as opposed to having the pre-existing language there that allows for a negotiation. Negotiation doesn't promise that there will be an additional lease, but at least it creates an on-ramp for that policy, if you take that first sentence and the last sentence, if the lease is expiring, and think about all these condo units, when that lease expires, all of these hangar owners are gonna have to pony up money to tear down their hangars, I mean, the, the, the units, because that, their lease is the condo association lease, not the individual hangars. Now, hangar owners may sell, buy and sell hangars. There's always churn of who's in there, but that doesn't trigger a new lease. The lease is held by the condo association. The hangar unit can be bought and sold. And again, that doesn't touch that underlying kind of lease. So let me talk about the reversionary versus the right of first refusal. It's interesting news that the airport now has a, a, maybe a pot of money to start buying hangars. If that's the case, we should be celebrating that. And this body should be thinking about how to use those funds to to think about a new FBO, to think about infrastructure improvements. This is the most exciting news there could be. But if there's that kind of money waiting for a lease to expire or waiting for a hangar to go on the market and sell isn't the way anybody in the, that's rational about trying to improve the airport would do business. They would send a letter to the owners of the properties that, they, that the airport envisions perhaps owning and saying, we would be very interested in buying your property. And we'd be very interested in accommodating you to move to a different location or whatever it would take so that the airport could have that property. So if there's that kind of money to do that, I don't get the theory behind using the right of first refusal as the instrument for that. So what is the theory? What's the theory behind going to a, a right of first refusal? Is it to start owning hangars so that the airport can be in the rental business? There's a reason no one ever washes a rental car. Nobody ever does that. People take care of their own property. They're interested in improving that property. They would be interested perhaps in having electrification if they're moving to an electric airplane. But if they're about to lose their hangar or if they're renting it from the city, they're not gonna be investing their own money in that. That money would have to come from the city, and I don't know where this pot of money is that maybe is there. I'll, I'll end with one last point, which is kind of an obscure one, which is section three, lease rates and other fees, about the CPI adjustment. It's, it's interesting to me, um, so I said last month, I'm a professional political scientist, and I'm actually working on a book where I just went through Denver uh, metro area, 
The Denver area, Aurora Lakewood metropolitan area does not include Boulder or Boulder County. So I'm assuming that if you want the inflation rate that includes Boulder County, what you mean is the Denver Aurora combined metropolitan area. The Fed puts out CPI thank you. That's adjustments, and, and nope, that's called the you. Denver Boulder Greeley combined metropolitan statistical area. Thank you. We're not allowed to yield time, I'm very sorry. We had this discussion in the bylaws. Nope. Would anyone else like to come speak? Come on down, you've got five minutes. Rick Hall, uh, 12 Spruce Drive. Apparently I'm no longer at 229 Airport Road, hangar H21 anymore. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking Mr. Uh, our airport manager. He's done a slam bang job on getting that sewer line in on under budget probably mm -hmm. and quite uh, quickly. Um, I don't know how many, uh, probably about a mile in like less than 30, 30 days. That, that's very impressive uh, work. Um, unfortunately, along these lines, uh, the weather got a little bit too cold for, to finish the striping. And um, I anticipate in, this, in the springtime it's it gonna go gangbusters. Um, yeah, no, I can't talk to individuals. Oh, that's fine. Oh, okay. We're just addressing that. Oh, okay. Um, I also have concerns about the, uh, the proposed language of the new lease. Um, my son is taking an interest in, my grandson, I'm sorry, is taking an interest in aviation. And it's my goal that when I die, he takes my hangar. It's not gonna turn into a storage building. However, the way everything is worded now, it ain't gonna happen. I'm sorry, I misspoke. I've not, I'm not married, I've never been married. But my hangar lease and the, and the, well, not the lease, but the hangar itself is going into my will. And it's going to a 501c3 that's very well known in my uh, community, that ain't gonna happen either. When I die, the executor, executor of my will is gonna have to tear my hanger down because that's the way the lease is gonna read. Does this make financial sense? No. There's some do-good policy within the city council specifically regarding the airport that uh, they don't want us to be pilots anymore. They might put up a bicycle a repair station, they might put up a horse park, but I know for a fact it's not gonna be an airplane. I understand the reasoning behind a reversionary clause. They don't want us here. Uh, it's been stated several times since just after COVID, the airport doesn't want to get in the rental business, period. On numerous occasions, they're not gonna get into the rental business. Well then why do you need to own my hangar? And the fact that you wanna rip it down when the lease expires, adds more fuel to that fire. I know you're an attorney, please meet you. Uh, there's probably a bunch more of them out at the Longmont Airport. We are just a bunch of rich pilots. We've got nothing to do in our spare time and pollute the air with carbon and, and lead and uh, other pollutants. And I think a lot of you are, are way off on that. We're all in this game together. All of us. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Would anyone else like to? Good evening, Kyle Manley, 940 Rangeview Lane, 80501. Everything else that I had uh, questions about seems to have been covered, but there's one I'd, I'd just like to have cleared up. If a hangar comes up for sale after this is adopted, approved, whatever, and the right of first refusal is not uh, taken by the city, they don't choose to exercise that, 
Will the new purchaser of the hangar be? Re can he? Will he be required to have a new lease, a new thirty-year lease, or can he use? The remaining time on the initial 30. That was the only question I would like clarify. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Steve Shook, 22, C2022, uh, Braeburn Court, Longmont. A couple things uh, I'm concerned with, and I urge you to vote no on this lease reversion. Um, the 30-year lease with no option. Well, that's good for one year. Then what happens? If you buy the hangar, you have a 30-year lease, you want to refinance it a couple years later, most banks aren't going to do it. Number two, a 1031 exchange is uh, the the Lowest amount of years is 30. I've been involved in many of them. So, again, 30 years, as soon as you buy it, you can't 31 exchange it. With the amount of money that we're paying for hangers, you know, that's a big thing to do a 1031 if you have that option. So, you know, I would just ask you to vote no and um, anyway, thanks. Thank you. Dave Cop, 4625 West 99th Place, Westminster. And I agree with uh, what Steve just said. There, uh, you definitely, definitely need to vote no on 2.2. That is a real can of worms more for what's not written there than what is. Uh, what was there was a 30 and possibly 20. We had 20 and 20. What happens to the 75 hangers you already got 30 and 30 on? You're gonna pull those back? You know, that's gonna be difficult to do. And, uh, and some of those 30s and 30s that you gave out are already 40-year-old uh, buildings. I got a building I just built in 2014. And uh, when that lease comes up, what am I going to get? The 30 again? Or do, you know, they stopped doing assignment of leases 2003. The first hanger I bought, I, I lease was assigned. Great, I got a seven cents a square foot lease until I renewed it. So I went from $400 a year to $1,400 a year. The information you got up there is not correct. You need to make some more calls, Eric, because I'll tell you a couple of things. I owned a hanger at Jeffco, now called Metro. And they, yeah, they had 20-year leases, but bottom line is you get to renew your lease every year. They didn't care. Took all the teeth out of a reversion clause, right? Now I've heard that they've eliminated their reversion clause because they couldn't attract any developers, me included. I, we were going to build 100,000 square feet of hangers down there. But the bottom line is they've now reversed, they've taken that away based on the, uh, the county fathers that uh, got together with uh, uh, Jeff Cohen and says, look, you need to change this. And it's, uh, what I heard from a developer is they don't have it. So, um, same thing happened in Sterling. Sterling had a reversionary clause, pulled it back, couldn't attract any developers. You keep this in here with a blank spot on that 2.2, and uh, you're not going to attract any developers. Plus, the bottom line is uh, you have you got a lot of open-ended questions. What happens on a sale? Do you start another 30-year lease, or are you assigning leases? You don't spell it out here. So, it's wide open. And when it's wide open, a developer that throws a lot of money at this airport's not going to happen. Not going to happen. You, you open up the biggest litigation this city has ever seen if you let this lease go. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Howard Morgan address is still the same. Uh, as you can see, there's many problems with this lease. And uh, uh, I hope that we can uh, have some meetings on this before it gets 
any further because there's a lot of problems and uh, some misinformation. The uh, reversion clause is just a, a terrible idea and you're gonna get a lot of blowback from that because uh, different people have different reasons for not having it. Uh, mine and some of the people you just heard, uh, I've built a series of hangers up uh, over the years to pass on to my kids. If I have to sell them to the city, uh, that's not good. Uh, with the reversion clause, it was also stated that uh, uh, people won't maintain them because uh, they're going to lose everything at the end of the lease, so why put any money into it? And you can see that at Boulder, where uh, the city has taken over a bunch of hangars, and they're, uh, they're uh, terrible, uh, worse than terrible. I don't know anybody that keep an airplane in one if they didn't have to. Uh, furthermore, uh, the hangar owners and uh, renters, actually, because of renters support the uh, investors, uh, m pay a major part of the uh, expense of running this airport, and we're not treated very well, and I think uh, people are really uh, not very happy with the way the city has been treating us. And this lease is a prime example. And uh, we need to have some meetings and work some things out that's agreeable to everybody. Uh, if you have happy, happy investors, uh, the airport's going to go a lot smoother than if everybody on the airport is mad. And if you come up with a reversion clause, there's going to be a lot of mad people, and I'm, I'm at the top of the list. So uh, let's get together and uh, see if we can do a uh, reasonable lease that covers all the uh, different angles. And there are several. The uh, last thing I want to say over at Greeley, they were going to do a reversion clause, and the biggest business over there, Beagle's Aircraft, said if you do that, we're out of here. And it's a multi-million dollar business, and they would have left but the uh, uh, Greeley uh, management came to their senses and they have no uh, reversion clause. So uh, hopefully we can avoid that. Thank you. Thank you. Don Dulce, 335 Pratt Street, Longmont. Um, I agree with the, the comments that have been made. There's certainly a lot of things uh, that are very negative about the reversion clause and and focusing on rewriting that whole section would, would really be in order. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to comment on was that having the city have a 30-day um, option to close the uh, documentation should a hangar hangar lease expire or if somebody comes to buy a hangar is is really excessive. Uh, I think a person that might show up to want to purchase a hangar would like to have that whole thing close in a very short period of time, seven days or ten days. Otherwise, if they find out that, well, it's going to be 30 days before the city even thinks about it and maybe longer, they're probably gone. So they've lost the sale. And, and that could be devastating for the for the seller. Uh, it would seem to me that if the city is knowledgeable of what they want to do on the airport, they could send that letter that was expressed that would say, hey, we'd like to buy your hangar at some point in time. We have plans. But uh, for, for them to come right at the very end and say, uh, well, it's going to take 30 days for us to figure out what we're going to do with that land before you can sell it, that just shows there, there isn't any planning going on at all. So that's ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. I will close public invited to be heard then on the leases. Board members, further comments, discussion? Mr. Robeson. Thank you. Um, I just want to clarify one thing. 
about 2.1, the last, the second sentence, I guess, if we take out the red, is in the current lease. So it has always said, you know, as long as I've been there, that the lessee shall remove all hangers, and it's just, we've always managed to sign a new lease in time, right, before that happens. So Levi, I'd like to hear from you what your sense is. When David was airport manager, was there a city uh, resolution saying like, you know, hey, we don't really want to own these hangers and rent them out or make them tear them down, so just try to sign a new lease in time because this sentence was in there. Mm -hmm. It just was never put into force, obviously. Yeah. And is that changing now? So kind of the, and this, this goes back to, you know, basic airport lease, you know, 101 in school. So that's pretty much, you'll see that particular provision in all airport leases regarding hangers. And the reason that's there is many structures, um, so let's say we did have a hangar diffler come in. He got, you know, a 30-year lease built a big bank, so we had a 20-year option to renew, so it was there for 50 years. A lot of structures are at the end of the useful life at that point. So the concept being here is uh, this land was, you know, leased. Uh, they built hangers on it. Those hangers now, you know, maybe they're covered with asbestos. Maybe they're resting apart. Um, that provision's in there so the city doesn't have to absorb the cost of tearing down a building um, if it's no longer structural worthy. So it's kind of, it's a provision in the lease to, to kind of protect the city well, and the citizens from having to absorb that cost. But was there a concurrent kind of memo from the city? There's no documentation no. that I can think of. No. So in your mind, is there anything changing now as far as the intent of the city to remove some of these hangars at the end of the 30-year lease? So there is no plan to remove any hangars on the airport at the moment. I think everyone would like to hear that, yeah. you know, to start with. Yeah, and again, uh, there sim seems to be this kind of idea that, oh, the city's out for people's hangars. The point of putting a first right of refusal in a lease is for master planning purposes. So the city decides they want to build a new FBO here. Um, the city recognizes that these hangars are incredibly old and falling apart, and we would like to start acquiring those, you know, to do something different with the land. Maybe a developer wants to come in and they really want this chunk of land. That's that's far out on the cusp of something can happen. But it's about acquiring land that the city would use for agreed upon future development that benefits the airport as a whole. Okay, thanks. Mr. Salamatine. Thank you, sir. So if the uh, purpose of this is for long-term planning, then there shouldn't be any problem with earmarking or designating certain hangers that are of interest to the city mm -hmm. So the 30 days shouldn't come into play then, right? Yeah. Because if you already have it planned out and then particular, you know, hangers go on the market, it should take much less than 30 days. From a practical standpoint, we should have a general idea of what we do or do not want to acquire. We wouldn't want to limit ourselves there. And also consider we move at the speed of government. True. Um, but, like, having my dad has passed uh, with, with cancer, so I understand what it's like to have to – liquidate assets in a, in a very rapid period of time. So I, it would, I would not feel good about the decision to pass this along if there's any sort of uh, risk of someone who needs to liquidate assets being unable to liquidate those assets and there being some sort of uh, big harm brought into that individual. And, and again, I think there, for some reason, there's this concept that, you know, for every instance, the city will wait exactly 30 days and then get back to you about this. For 99.99% of all cases, it's going to be, you're going to come have a discussion with me. Uh, we're going to check. It's going to be solved within a matter of, you know, days, if not hours. Um, so, well, again. Then, then let's switch it back saying that unless there's extenuating circumstances that uh, any right of first refusal will happen within 7 or 10 days. And again, we don't want to put ourselves in a position where we're limiting ourselves. So let's say that you, that notification is sent on the day I go out on vacation, and it's signed for by someone in the office who forgets to put it in my mailbox, and now it's 20 days later. Um, so there's all kinds of s scenarios we could toss back and forth here as far as what can or cannot occur. Um, but again, it all comes down to, as a city, we need time to process paperwork.
So I would just note that we have on the last page of the packet um, language that I sent to the city based on the discussion we had before that has a seven day, which the city doesn't love, but also has the ability for the city to end that period upon notice sooner mm -hmm. so that in the event Levi knows within hours or a day or whatever it is, this is not of interest, that clock stops. And so there's no longer a delay because the way it's written right now, at least the way I read it, and I'm certainly not an attorney, even though I like to pretend, um, there's 30 days and that doesn't stop, even if Levi doesn't want it. And that really, you know, that to me is a big concern. Mr. Robeson. Thank you. Um, I wanted to address, I forget which member of the public uh, brought it up, but I'm part of a condo association, so to speak, as well. So when 2.2 says lessee, that means the condo association, correct? Yeah, to whoever is leasing it, yeah, so the association. So in your mind, is it within the contract that if one of the hangers within that condo association is trying to be sold, that this provision would come into play? Or is it only if the condo association is selling their whole building? Again, this would uh, relate to whatever the definition of the parcel was in the lease with the city itself. The parcel is the whole building? No, it's the parcel, yeah. So you're... So I'm getting from you that if any individual hanger within that parcel is being sold, it would not come under the 2.2 provisions? And again, as, as not as a lawyer, and I wouldn't want to comment on Mr. That, May? You got but. one right there. <laughs> uh, I'd have to look at the circumstances. I, I'm not familiar with the condo association or that lease. I'd, I'd have to look at that language and look specifically at a real situation in front of me. So that's pretty significant uh, before we make any kind of recommendation or like this or don't like it. That's there are a lot of hangers under a condo. Thanks. Vice Chair Jordan. I am ignorant about something that I hate the fact that I am. The I know how old our airport is, but and I know it was at Roosevelt Park and then it moved out to Airport Road. What is the oldest hanger on the field right now? How old is it? That's a, they I, seem ancient. Some I of those are. I can't speak with that with authority, but I can give you a general idea. Um, I know that the FBO building there, the out front of it, there's actually it says 1960 in the concrete. Okay. I know that the building I'm currently in was built prior to that. Ooh, okay. And so we're looking at at least 50s, mid 50s okay. for the structures out there. Thank you, because my point is that. Um, 30 years, I understand the teardown clause. I understand it more from the aspect of um, having to level it because of a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. So I managed uh, West Houston Airport in Katy that was hit by a tornado and took out all the avionics. It took out all the businesses. So I understand leveling it in order to figure out what you're going to do with it and rebuild. Um, I don't understand that at the end of a 30-year lease, you've got to tear it down when we've got buildings there that are ancient. And again, yeah, it's it's just a provision there for if the building has come to its life. I mean, as you can see, cause I, don't, I can't think of any instance, and I don't think anyone else here can think of any instance where someone has been asked to tear down their hangar at the end of the lease. Okay. I guess it's that um, unspoken, uh, that, well, the language is there, so the paranoid con con concern I, is it, that... I guess it is worth mentioning that I actually have come across cases where that has occurred before. Um, when I was up in Montana, we had an instance where a hangar was, the city did ask them to tear it down. It turns out that uh, there was a significant camp contamination that that shop had been responsible for that mm -hmm. essentially condemned that building. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the lease, the city did pursue and ask them to tear it down at significant cost to them because they had, they had done some things they weren't supposed to do and then were asked to politely asked to pay for it and pointed at their lease that they should. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. Um, if somebody's making meth at our airport, they're going to have some problems. Hopefully they're not. Yeah. Um, but to the, um, you know, the public sentiment is basically we're going to have things in writing. Mm -hmm. We're going to be, our feet are going to be held to the fire with that language. Um, we're looking for loopholes and clauses and ways out and um, just how we function with a large investment. Um, and we look at other things going on in the city. Um, we wonder 
what treatment they're getting. We always, we're always paranoid and we always, like I said, we feel like stepchildren. Um, I wonder about the hotel that we've been reading about. What did they get? And everything is negotiable, but just that the concern is um, uh, handing your, as was discussed, handing this asset to your children or having it be a part of your estate or to some organization that you deem it uh, to go to. And then just that the concern that the city would trigger a clause and would go ahead and start taking over when that hasn't, you know, there is just, you know, and again, there it's is in no, there, there's room for it. And there is no plan for the city to systematically start acquiring hangars and renting them out or anything like that. It's all about the potential to develop in the future and the utilization of our own land is, is all it's yeah. for. And it's, there's no plans. And, and as I've put this before, uh, you know, all likelihood, I'll probably never even, I'll probably stay here my whole life, retire, and never have to execute this clause. Mm -hmm. It's just about giving the airport options for making it better in the future if it needs to. So let me ask the city attorney this then. Is there a way to uh, include language that would refer to um, master plan to uh, the conversation of where is this going? The city should have a plan that they're executing that then we would fall under as the hangars became available, meaning uh, is there a way to put that in there that um, per the master plan, you know, that the city would state their intent and then people could offer, you know, could say, okay, I'm going to go build on the south side a brand new hangar and you can have my old one to do what you want to do with it. And they give us some vision because 30 years really isn't that long for an individual, especially if they start flying at 18. Uh, Eugene May, city attorney. So I'm not quite exactly sure what the idea is. I mean, lawyers are creative. We can write whatever our client directs us to do. Um, and, you know, I think the board can make the recommendations it would like uh, on lease language and staff will have its position and the ultimate decision maker on this is gonna be city council and they can make the policy determinations if that's in the best interest of the city. Council Member Martin. Um, thanks. Um, I apologize for talking so much because it's you know really not what I want to do. But uh, I have been sitting listening to this and looking for the old airport lease and it does not seem to be uh, accessible to the public at all, or I sure can't find it. So apparently someone only sees their lease when they come to the city and say, I want to rent a hangar parcel. Um, so I would, I, I very much want to see the old lease before having to vote on this. Uh, we had a discussion uh, by phone and uh, about this and I sort of thought I would I would get it, but yeah, this is a red line. Um, so, uh, and and yeah. and I don't know if this is the old. No one ever told me whether this was the old lease and all the edits come to the new. But then it seems to me that that based on um, based on the language, if if this was in fact the old lease, then everybody's got a lease that. A, requires them to tear down their hangar, yeah. and if they didn't for some reason, it would revert to the city because they abandoned it. Yeah. So uh, it, it, I'm puzzled to understand uh, what, uh, what everybody is so mad about because they're getting a right of first refusal, which they never had before. It's a benefit. Um, yeah. There is uh, so to your point. So yes, this is the this is the previous incarnation of the lease, at least the way it was when I came mm -hmm. here. So this was the most recent red line version of it. And then yes, that is kind of you you bring up the concept. It's kind of a benefit, and that's the kind of way that I think about it. And and here's why. Right now, as a city, our options for acquiring land, if we if we want to, is essentially just to force a lease term to run out. Mm -hmm. So if, if we're going to develop this big new giant FBO, if we need the parcel next to it, 
Right now, our option is to let the term run out and not do a new land lease for anybody until it turns out and then take it over. Mm -hmm. So and if we do that, it's just it seems to me like a terrible thing to do because you essentially make that land worth nothing for the remainder of its lease. So if, if you know, June decides to sell uh, her lease and there's 10 years left on it and the city says, well, gosh, we, that's where our new FBO is going. Sorry, we're not going to do new land lease. Uh, whereas before, at that point, we could have come to her. So it's like, yeah, we got first right refusal, so we're going to pay you all this money for your building, and then you're going to get your money right now, and you can move on. Uh, it seems to be more of a beneficial solution to me. Well, um, you know, I, I, I think... I think that a lot of the scenarios that are being described are things that just wouldn't happen. So there is there's nothing in this lease no. that says that the city can't make an offer yeah. to somebody whose lease hasn't run out. Of course, and that's the most logical first. Well, that's what would happen if the city yeah. really wanted to do something with the land is they'd make an offer yeah. and they'd make a nice offer if they wanted you know they they'd make probably an above market offer because they wanted the land there's all kinds of theoretical stuff that we've kind of been throwing around today but i mean you you've gotten to the kind of the heart of it right there is you know we're always going to work with our tenants to make the best outcome possible really these are just protections for the city to make sure that we're not limiting ourselves moving forward that we can do improvements in an affordable timely manner and develop the airport in a way that's beneficial to everyone yes and if your hangar was really bad the city could condemn it any time yeah don't have to don't have to wait till the end of the lease to condemn it if it's if no. it's contaminated or falling apart and in a public danger so that's not really a case and and then the the last one is if if somebody gets to the end of their lease and they can't sell their hangar and they walk away what really can happen i mean they're supposed their lease says they're responsible so they can't walk away and leave the city holding a, the bag for a hangar it doesn't want mm -hmm. and those are really the only cases that matter yeah. and all these those, these other situations just don't happen yeah. because there's an easier way out of it. Yeah, and just to reiterate again, we're not out to get people's hangers. We don't want to kick them off the airport. There's not going to be any development of tennis courts. It's all about airport development. It's all about improving the airport moving forward. Mr. Salamatin, go ahead. Uh, I respect that, and I, I'm sure you guys are right that there would be a better solution than just to wait until uh, someone's about to make a transaction and then mm -hmm. swooping in. Mm -hmm. However, just to steal a phrase that you guys use, which is the speed of bureaucracy, I want to prevent the speed of bureaucracy causing undue harm to our members of our community. Mm -hmm. So if there's any way that we could, you know, uh, as soon as we have a notion that a particular parcel or hangar is of value to the city that they should be earmarked and the residents or, or owners notified so that they can make that part of their calculus when making decisions on business decisions right mm -hmm. i mean to me that just makes sense mm -hmm. yeah and of course it's, it's hard for me to comment because we don't have plans to take over any hangers so it's, it's never come up before again these are all just minor contractual things which I would point out are standard across the region that the that we're trying to put into place to to improve the airport leave a couple of just questions here mm -hmm. I want to be very clear this only applies to new leases there's yes, no there's change to any existing lease all existing leases are existing leases yep. the 30 plus 30s that are out there <coughs> will continue to be out there yeah at the so at this point in time the FAA has not uh, pushed it. We're kind of in a realm of, of you're the new guy, don't do it again uh, mentality moving forward. Um, so at that, there's been no issues with that. When a lease is, to use this language, sold, assigned, otherwise transferred, someone even has a current lease, so mm -hmm. no right of first refusal. Does that restart the 30 year clock? Do they go to the new lease? language so in the past we've kind of done that on an individual basis uh, depending on the situation so I would say you know with that, again without having a specific situation in front of me um, it's dependent upon the situation whether it's a transfer or a lease if it's a transfer current term applies is that is that accurate 
So it was. So you said could be a transfer, could be a new lease. Yeah. In a transfer. Okay. Same language, same term. Doesn't reset. So same language, same term. Same, oh, so if, if, yeah. if a lease was being transferred, then... You're basically again, crossing I, out the name on the lease and putting a new name. Yeah, again, I, I'd have to I'd have to get through the specifics. I'd understand the legal ins and outs of it. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Robeson. I guess just anecdotally, that is what has been happening from all the people that I've talked to, is generally the transfer is essentially scratching out the old name and writing in the new, and they've fulfilled the rest of the lease. Have recently, you, that's recently. kind of what we've been doing to uh, stop gap measure to make sure that we're staying within grant assurances. Yeah. Since I've been here, we've done lease transfers to make sure that we are not creating new issues for ourselves. Yeah. This is part of that process to making sure we can move forward and have good solid leases that are acceptable to the FAA. <laughs> I get, the other comment I had was a lot of this seems like it's a communication thing. Like when I was asking about, is there a memo from the city with intent that's been kind of behind a lot of this. We want to know what the city's up to when they're putting these clauses in. I understand the city wants protection for teardown and things like that. Can we recommend at the same time a concurrent resolution since we're talking resolutions? Like here's what the city is trying to do and let's get some clear communication out to the hangar owners to make them feel more assured. Okay. That's, we can do that as a board, right? Recommend that uh, if we're going to recommend a lease language, then we can recommend a concurrent resolution. Well, we can recommend anything to council that we that's, vote on. That's what. <laughs> Councilmember Martin. Um, I would just say what Levi already has said. There is no council policy about the disposition of land use on the airport at this time, mm -hmm. and if there were, it would not be in the part of the in. It would not be part of the template lease. It would be part of a, um, a you know, a, an airport master plan. You know, the airport master plan is pretty old, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and council is is I mean the closest thing to justification for making a new one, other than the, you know, the land use sub piece of it, uh, is that resolution you guys are taking home to work on. Uh, you know, there is, uh, the council has not seen this red line, except for me, okay? It, this is not something that the, that the council has devised. This is something, I don't even know who did this red line. But, but it, trying to, to tie it to some larger city policy is, is just not what's out there. We have to have a lease to give people rights to their hangar parcel. And that lease is, is typically standard. And since we had to mess with the term of the lease, or actually we didn't, we could have left it at 20 years and not changed anything. And then you would, by the way, have been required to tear down your hangar if you kept that lease at 20 years and, um, and for some reason, like you had bad credit or something, you couldn't get a renewal. Um, so uh, there's, there's just no, you know, there's no overarching plan right now. And, and there doesn't need to be for the city to lease land to consumers. Vice Chair Jordan. I'm, I'm compelled to put this into perspective um, for the sake of the people on the field. The, the runway was going to be extended um, in my lifetime. It was going to ha there was a date for the runway extension to happen. Uh, here we sit. That was uh, 10 years ago. We have a master plan for the airport. Uh, we don't see those things being walked out. We have... We've fumbled, stumbled, we leased out to an FBO that has absolutely failed to perform and we seem to have no remedy for an FBO that isn't meeting. We, I went through uh, rules and regs and uh, minimum standards when I first joined the board and people were very concerned about 
those uh, bars being set and how as individual hangar owners and um, flight instructors operating out of a hangar, how they were going to be able to meet all that. And so we were very concerned about what we were being held to, as is the case with the leases. We look at our FBO, and you've heard enough about it. <laughs> we say, what are they being held to? Why aren't they being held to anything? Why are we having to sweat out the details in our leases? And the FBO is crumbling in front of us and not delivering, and we have no flight school, and we haven't got fuel, and so many things wrong. So the public says, why are we fiddling around with um, these lesser matters when that's a bigger matter? And that all comes back around to leases, promises, expectation management, um, and all the things just in my tenure that I've seen that were supposed to have happened as I joined that fell off. And um, so I think that's really the spirit of the concern and the, um, the heart of it is we fail to see anything come to fruition that really matters. And we've seen things fail right in front of us. And that's, mm -hmm. again, we're to, our goal is to make it a world-class airport and a pioneer, a leader, a place to come. We want to be proud of our airport and we want to be proud of our hangars and we want to be proud of our ownership out there and that we call that home. And so that's really... That's the motivation, I think, of everybody who's speaking is saying we're being held to some standards that we're not sure as individuals, you know, that we're going to have the money to tear down a hangar at the end of a lease. And we've got an FBO that has 10 more years to fail us every single day and nothing's happening there. So it's that balance of um, we're feeling we are always very defensive and we are the stepchildren. And so this is just another um another chance to expose that and expose how we feel about things. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the community in general is saying, you know, we're with you. We've, we've put our trust in. We have taken these leases. We're making mm -hmm. our payments. We're keeping them clean. We're abiding by the rules. So please be kind and recognize that and respect that. And, and then could we get this into reasonable language so that we can then talk about the FBO mm -hmm. and talk about the future and making the airport something that we're proud to have a hangar at and proud to um, say that's where we're based and give you the opportunity to have an asset that's appealing and will attract that business that we are craving mm -hmm. and um, a rest, a place to eat and some restrooms on the yeah. south side. I mean, some things that we've been talking about forever that we can't get done. And so that's really the big cloud around all this, and that's the emotion and the yeah. um, the deep seated concern is that we've been let down so many times, and so and that certainly makes sense, and and I can say it's you know that's my goal too. It's you know it's my goal to make this a world class general aviation airport, and part of doing that is going to have be having tools at my access that gives me the same powers that other airports have to actually make changes for the better. So as I move forward, that's a lot of the decisions you're going to be seeing is decisions that, I mean, and we're talking ultimately, you know, the next hundred years here when we're talking about leases and stuff like that for some of the stuff, plans way out in the future. It's all about driving towards the ultimate goal of an improved airport as quickly as we can, but also in a responsible manner and have that. We need tools and we need tools like this. And yet you do know we've watched airports being uh, bulldozed, and that's our concern. Yeah. So let's just put it out there. We're yeah. worried that the airport's going to be turned into a dog park or something yeah. else, it's, and it's, that we're going to lose our asset. It so. has happened in the past, mm -hmm. and, and not to my knowledge of many really close to here, but in other states certainly there's been issues with that, and it's you know very much against that. And from the city's, oh, in my Experience here has been very pro airport, and they're they're proud of the airport, and they want to make it into something great too. So I've seen nothing but support for making this a better airport. I I wish we could say that we feel that, and <laughs> I don't I don't think we um, mm -hmm. we don't I don't the confidence isn't there because of the failure on so many other areas that neither you or I had anything to do with, mm -hmm. but they exist. And so it's the concern that as the airport is deteriorating in front of us, um, we're looking to see, you know, it's got to flourish 
to back mm -hmm. up what you're saying. Mm -hmm. We see it just being allowed to deteriorate until it's going to be bulldozed. And so that's, I think that's the, um, the concern is okay. uh, we've had a lot of unfulfilled promises, unfulfilled um, plans. And as that continues to deteriorate, it makes it look more attractive as a dog park. Um, and we don't want that. Okay. Councilmember Martin. Um, a context for your context, Melinda. Um, a plan is a plan. It can never be a promise when it's a municipal government, a home rule city, and a Colorado municipal enterprise. Um, the enterprise uh, has to run off of its own income. All right, so for example, LPC, who was here earlier today, raises rates. Nobody likes that, but to keep the lights on, sometimes it has to happen. Same with, you know, wastewater, sewer. This, the, those entities of which the airport is one cannot tax the city of Longmont to get revenue to do things like build an FBO. And, you know, so there's two sources of, there's two sources of revenue. There is doing the business of the airport, which includes leasing hangars, um, and doing business development and getting business through the fence businesses to come that will pay a higher rate. Um, there is getting grants from the FAA and other sources there's no taxation, and there's no way to stop um, the Boulder County from purchasing and using the land that is out at the end of the runway, making a runway extension impossible physically. You know, there was no way for us to do that. So, or no way for us to stop it, rather. So. I understand the frustration, but I, uh, you know, it's 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 like with imagined motives about the right of of first refusal or reversionism for that for that matter. It's not what you think. It's just the legal and op illegal environment, statutory environment that we have to operate on. Um, so. You know, I am sorry, the Longmont Economic Development Partners um, and the City Council are pro-airport and the, because we're pro-economic development and we're doing the best we can, but we only have certain ways to make money and, and that's what it comes down to. Thanks everybody for comments. I've got no one else in the queue. I don't love making motions, but if you all indulge me, I'm gonna make a motion. Um, and the motion would be, after three months of discussing this at 8.18 p.m., we s recommend to city council that we move forward with the language in this lease, the red line, with the following amendments. The city has seven days from written receipt. Um, certified mail is not the requirement, just written receipt and that the city has the ability to end that seven day election period early upon notification to the lessee. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion of the motion? Did you have a discussion or just a second? Nobody? I figured there was coming, Russell. Mr. Robeson. I just wanted to have time to read it again. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not rushing it. Were you you're satisfied with the uh, 60 days to complete the purchase? You're only concerned with the 30 to say yay or nay? I'm not satisfied with the 60 days, but we've been doing this for three months, and I can't imagine having, no matter what, this has to go to city council for their approval. There is no way that can happen faster than, let's say, 45 days if everything possible aligns. I, I, I think it's, and this is my personal opinion, um, I'm really pleased that the airport is coming more in line with the city's organization and getting more support. 
and Levi, I support your right to go on vacation and not check your email, <laughs> but the city should be able to respond within seven days. Yeah. Um, and that should be, you know, regardless if you're in the office or not. Yeah. But I just don't, I can't see city council moving fast just because it has to go through that process legally. Okay. You probably know better than I do. I, I, I don't necessarily. That's just my, <laughs> that's my perspective. And I would love someone to argue, disagree if you think differently. Any further discussion on the motion? Call a vote. Any all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We'll make a recommendation. I'm sorry, let me go back to my agenda. Um, we're on to a final public invited to be heard. Would anyone like to have the final opportunity to be heard? I've said it twice already. Same rules apply. Five minutes. Start with your name and address, please. Dave Cop, 4625 West 99th Place, Westminster. Um, you're still ignoring the, uh, the rat trap in 2.1 which is in fact a reversion clause as written because there's nothing at the end of the 30 years. And what is a hangar worth that doesn't have a lease? It's not even worth the cost of removal. So the city could say, oh, well, here's my appraisal and, and bottom line, steal it. It's felony theft. So it's, it's a tragedy. Thank you. Don Dulce, 335 Pratt Street, Longmont. I wanted to pass something along to Marcia since she's looking for ways to uh, humanely manage the prairie dogs. Uh, yesterday, there was an article in Science News Magazine online where they are controlling mice by doing CRISPR edits of their genes so they're sterile, and they've looked at a way to control 200,000 mice in 25 years with just 25 CRISPR edits. So you can catch 250 prairie dogs pretty easy out there. They'll be gone in three years. This is Science News Online. I will it's a research project in Australia. Forth. It's a research project in Australia that's going on right now. So you might look into that or have somebody look into it. Uh, there was a comment about noise earlier. Uh, and in the master plan, we did a DNL 65, which is required by the FAA. Mm -hmm. And the only noise that was at 65 decibels was a very tiny area right in the middle of the runway. Mm -hmm. After that, the noise was lower, so no mitigation was required. So it really didn't matter if it's an electric airplane or a, uh, a powered aircraft. Uh, there was no noise off, off the field. And I think that was part of the subject of the lawsuit with Mile High, in that uh, in the end it was determined that the Longmont and the, probably Boulder County did not have a noise problem but there were some individuals that had problems with noise. It's kind of the net bottom line of that lawsuit. Um, it was a, a request, a comment about the reversion or tearing down of hangars on the airport. And the oldest hangar on the airport, I believe, is the Flying Farmers Hangar. Mm -hmm. That hangar, when I was chairman of the board, uh, went through and had completed two 20-year leases and was told they had to do some work on that hangar because it was kind of dilapidated. They went through and refurbished it and have been working through possibly another 20-year lease right now. They're probably 10 years into it. So that just rolled over. Um, and last point, it may be too late, but um, there's been a lot of verbal going back and forth on the lease, leasing and uh, Harrison Earl's comments about very small subtleties. It would seem like one way to manage some of that would be to build a flow diagram of all those little pieces and see how they all work and see if there's a way to bring them together or 
leave them separate, and then from there construct the verbiage for the for the contract for the lease document. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to close us out this evening? All right, seeing no one. Board, council, staff comments, starting with board members. Who has more comments? Vice Chair Jordan. Thank you. I'm, uh, we've got an air show set for September 23rd, 2023. So I've started reaching out to uh, uh, prior executive director type. We had a um, leadership team. So I've been reaching out to them to start setting up some meetings and get going on this. And um, Chairman, or um, um, I'm not lacking your name, I'm lacking oh. how I'm supposed to call you. My uh, fellow board member, Malcolm, has uh, been working on um, putting in a request for a B2 flyover. So we've got mm -hmm. some traction uh, for the air show. And we're underway, so I just wanted to say it's it's happening, but I haven't set any meetings because of the holidays and, and just schedules. So I've, we'll be working on that. And then we had talked about the public viewing area off of Airport Road that has the Eagle Scout Project mm -hmm. um, uh, scale runway tower. And I talked to Wade Tag about how they got that done. Mm -hmm. And he just went to the airport manager, mm -hmm. asked permission, was given permission, um, he did have to get a permit for the mock tower because the mm -hmm. because it was a structure, yeah. and he did get a little bit of um, uh, he had some visits while they were working on it from the city. He referred them to the airport manager, who then said I authorized it. Mm -hmm. So I've reached out to um, the president of Friends of Vance Brand, the nonprofit that we've set up to benefit the airport. And um, that was to go toward runway extension. That was to help the city put up their portion of the money. Um, and I have talked to him as well about um, a it would be a scholarship that we would request and then maybe that organization would finish off that space um, with the permission of the airport manager. So we talked about there was an inquiry into Parks and Rec and yeah. it was five to six years off. So I've gotten a little bit more information and I'll follow up on that with you later. Yeah. And I got a little update on that too. I've been okay. touching base with the FAA about that and they at the moment have no objections before they give any official blessings or thumbs up. They wanted to see kind of what the plan for the area was. Mm -hmm. So they said next step is once you got kind of a plan for the area, run it by us and then well, they said they would review at that point. Okay. So as far as the, uh, the public that had looked into it and mm -hmm. the citizenry or the, um, I'd probably start with LOPA, um, yep. that organization on the airport. And we could mm -hmm. propose, but I think the proposal is just some grass up to the fence, yeah. a paved area for people to park, a paved area for people to sit. Yeah. Um, of course, the Eagle Scout project stays and just cleaning it up so that the airport's attractive. Yep, um, of course, and uh, we're staying close touch with them, and as things move forward, we'll keep it moving forward. Okay. Yep. Um, I think it's really important to acknowledge Vice Chair Jordan that this is your last meeting with us as you were term limited out. <laughs> and I continue to be impressed with everything that you are bringing to the table, including pushing us forward in your last meeting and setting up <laughs> meetings and continuing to keep us going forward. And I can't say how much I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate what you do for all of us and we will very much miss you up here. No, I'll, no. I'll, I'll come back. Oh, thank you. My gosh, I hope so. Yeah. I think, yeah, somebody's got to do it. Um, and I don't watch television. That's what I tell people. I don't watch TV. So I have time, and this is the stuff I think about. So um, I just appreciate being able to do this. And uh, I remember when I applied for the board and all the cautions I was given about uh, was meters, water meters, and a lot of things going on that are way past and rules and regs and all those things. And a lot has happened, and a lot hasn't happened. And... We had a pandemic thrown in the middle of that oh, that yeah. really that's cost right. some time. And that's my only regret is I feel like we're really, now we're getting some energy and some momentum and, and I'm looking forward to what's gonna happen in the future. 
and I'll be I'll come sit over there and antagonize you guys. <laughs> and I understand you can sit out a year and then reapply. So we'll see what happens. But the um, yeah the air show and that that uh, park project I'll continue to help with those. Thank you, Mr. Robeson. Thank you. I had down that you and Steve spots were up too. You're coming back. Um, I have applied to come back. I have an interview oh, with council on Saturday, and I believe council will vote sometime later this month. And Steve is applied to come back. I do not know that. I think uh, Steve, not. yeah, unfortunately, he he missed the. He did not. Yeah. Were there were other applications though. Yeah. Okay. Correct. There, I believe, even if the applicants are fully appointed, which is obviously up to council and the mayor, um, there's still at least one opening on the board. Mm -hmm. At least one, maybe two. Mm -hmm. So when those get advertised again, would encourage everybody, please. Um, other comment I'll make, I recognize this is, we're in the weeds, we're looking at leases, there's not, you know, there, there, there's a lot of strong feelings about a lot of this, but this is maybe the second or third meeting that I've been on the board and I've been on now four years, that someone has said something positive about the airport manager. <laughs> and I, I, I just want to acknowledge the fact that, you know, that itself is a big momentum change. And I recognize we're way far off from where any of us want to be right now, Levi, you included. Mm -hmm. But I do just want to acknowledge the fact that there is positive feedback out there about what you're doing, because um, that has not happened in years about this airport. And I think it's worth noting. Um, <laughs> third, yeah. Yeah. Councilmember Martin, any further comments from you this evening? Sure. Um, I've made an awful lot, um, but uh, I would also like to say I'm very pleased with the energy that Levi is bringing to this. I'm especially pleased with his weekly, if necessary, um, status updates on what's going on because there is nothing worse as a council member to get a call and not have a clue mm -hmm. what the answer is. And if it's about the airport now, I always know what the answer is. Um, so that is fabulous. And I want to remind Levi that the city and shared services strategic uh, integration is providing you with more um, grant writing support mm -hmm than any airport manager has ever had in the past. And that's the way to get all of these things done. Yeah, I'm, I actually met with Stacy the day before yesterday and I took her on a tour of the airport and we talked and she seems very excited to be a part of it. So Wonderful. that's also very, very encouraging. Yeah, good. Vice Chair Jordan. Um, when is the annual report? going to be delivered, do you know? Yeah, that's something that we haven't spoken about yet. We'll have to get into here um, okay. currently. So that's, we, we, I did get the copy from you. Do you want to talk about Yeah, that? I think we uh, we need to have that out to you next month, so January okay. for our annual report. So. Okay. I did request uh, some community information to get to you okay. um, about um, charitable uh, philanthropic that's happening on the airport. Um, primarily Aero Angel, medical flights, mm -hmm. uh, animal rescue, those are the ones that come to mind first. But I have put out a couple of requests uh, for people to submit information that can go into that report okay. about um, uh, community operations on the airport, that there's more that goes on out there than just people flying around. Mm -hmm. And just as a follow-up, um, Levi and I, I have only been doing this since April. <laughs> and so... Um, it's my understanding from other boards and commissions that we, the annual report just talks about what this board has done over the last year. So if, if there's something else there, let's chat about that um, maybe offline, but that's my understanding of the annual report is for council to review kind of your work over the last uh, 12 months. So um, if it's different, we'll certainly add things as, as you need, but. That's that was my focus anyway. Yeah. Just going into this, and again, I've not been part of the history, so I apologize for my lack of understanding there. But that's what I'm doing for transportation advisory board, is uh, just taking the meetings from the last 12 months and putting those together and saying, here's what here's what you went through, and here's the work that you got done, um, here's all the things you heard, um, basically from staff, and your and the work you did. 
So it has been um, a very sterile document historically. I, I do, now that you say that, I remember that. And what happened is it ends up in the newspaper because of all the, in the past, uh, because of the lawsuits and all the visibility we had at the airport. Um, after the lawsuits, we had some fatals with skydiving and we just had a lot of attention. So the motivation was, since it was going to be presented to the public, was to give them a as opposed to just this dry picture of us discussing leases for three months, um, more of what happens at the airport uh, to get the public to understand and with respect to noise complaints and um, activity, general activity. And again, out of that defensive position that we're in, please don't tear down our airport. And these are the other things that are happening there that you may not be aware of. So that was the spirit of it, and it was because when it was being presented, um, it was in the front page of the paper, and people were coming, and we were trying to present a bigger picture than just our, our dry report. So what I'll do is still get that information to you, and then it's it's not, obviously not my call what happens with it, but you'll have it if there's to be a, um, a softer, uh, more public-facing view of other things that happen at the airport, justifications. City staff, any comments? I'm good. Okay. Um, well, one comment is just we will miss Melinda, and we appreciate your service over the time that we've known you. Again, not very long, but uh, thank you for your service. Thanks, Steve, for his service. We hope um, you'll be back. But uh, thank you again, and all the things that you're doing beyond um, this board and for the airport. Thank you. Thank you all for a productive meeting. Lots of discussion. Appreciate city attorneys for being here so we can really dive into it. Um, and thank everyone for the engagement. I'll call the meeting adjourned. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your time, man. Ooh, bro.